In this video, we're going to address what I consider one of the most important topics in managerial accounting, and that's ethics. Why is ethics in accounting so important? Mainly it's because accountants are responsible for other people's money and assets, but it's also because they have access to sensitive, often private information. Finally, it's because they have the important responsibility of providing well-researched and fully supported advice to their clients. As accountants, we have a fiduciary duty to our clients. What exactly is a fiduciary duty? A fiduciary duty exists when a client trusts you, relies on you, and has confidence in you. They believe that you will exercise discretion and use your expertise in their best interest. A fiduciary duty is when you always act in the best interests of another person or entity and not your own. To create an environment of ethical behavior, many organizations enact a code of conduct or a code of business ethics to ensure their employees, including the accountants, act ethically. Not only do companies create codes of conduct, but governments have enacted ethics into law, mainly because in 2000 and 2001, there was a market meltdown due to fraudulent financial reporting. Basically, accounting managers cooked the books. In United States, U.S. Congress codified legislation, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, SOX for short. This was to restore confidence in the accounting profession after the financial meltdown, which was mainly caused by poor and unethical financial reporting. Exactly what does the Sarbanes-Oxley Act require of accountants? Accountants and auditors must certify that the financial statements are a fair representation of the company's financial condition. Top management has to certify that there is a strong system of internal controls in place to safeguard the assets and ensure accuracy in financial reporting. It states that members of the company's board of directors, including the audit committee, must be independent, meaning non-employees. It also says that one member must be a financial expert. And the Act has also increased the consequences of misconduct, which now include prison time and hefty fines. Do we have something similar in Canada? In Canada, we have set up the Canadian Public Accountability Board, CPAB for short. They oversee the independence and transparency of the Canadian accounting system. Its purpose is to increase public confidence in financial reporting and auditing. We also have regulations which govern the composition and duties of the audit committee, and we have corporate governance regulations. Basically, regulations with regards to how organizations govern themselves. Overriding all of this is the CPA Code of Professional Conduct, which applies to all accountants, managerial or financial. It outlines the accountant's fiduciary duty to their clients. Let's go through a few situations that you might run into in your workplace by completing a solve it question. We're going to apply ethical thinking to better understand who might be impacted by your choices and what the possible outcomes might be depending on your actions. For each situation, consider who is affected by the situation, what you should do, and what are the possible consequences of your actions. Situation number one. You are at work and another employee confines in you that they have been taking unauthorized office supplies such as printing paper and pens from the supply cabinet. You know that they are under financial pressure since their spouse has lost their job last month and their son is now in university, which they are struggling to pay for. Who are the stakeholders in this situation? The entities which will be affected by the employee's actions. The company who no longer has those supplies to run their business. Other employees who no longer have those supplies to do their job the employee who has taken the supplies, and you, who are now in the difficult position of being privy to the theft, but who also is not associated with the theft. What should you do? And the answer is not to do nothing. First, you need to talk to your coworker and tell them that they have to stop taking the supplies. You need to explain that the company purchases those supplies for work use only, and they can't be taken without the permission of someone in authority. 
You should explain to them that their actions may result in not just a reprimand, but the actual loss of their job. You need to also tell them that if they continue to take supplies unauthorized, you will have to report the behavior to their boss. This is one of the hardest things about acting ethically. You have a duty to not only act ethically yourself, but a duty to protect the organization you work for. You are required to act as a whistleblower, and that is a very difficult thing to do. Situation number two. You have had a very difficult day at work. One of your coworkers updated the company's computerized order entry system incorrectly, and now you have a client yelling at you on the phone because their order was not shipped on time. You're tired, and when your spouse asks you how your day was, you tell them all about your incompetent coworker and your rude client. You don't hold anything back, not even the client's name. Come on, is this a big deal? I mean, lots of people go home and they share information about their day. What's the problem? To see that this is a huge deal, let's look at the stakeholders in this situation. Your company, whose reputation with their clients, is now at risk. Because you never know who your spouse will tell, even if you tell them not to tell anyone. Your coworker, whose reputation has been tarnished and whose privacy has now been breached, Your client, because you've shared private and confidential information about them, including the company's name and the client's name. You, because you've shared information about the company you work for and their customer's name, information which is both private and confidential. What should you do? Unfortunately, you can't fix the past, but you can change your behavior moving forward. In the future, never share information about your coworkers or your clients because it's a violation of privacy. This type of information is confidential and you should never disclose it to anyone, not even your spouse. The consequence of your actions may be a reprimand from your boss, but it may also be a note to your personnel file. If you repeatedly share private and confidential information, you may lose your job. There are other examples of situations which require ethical thinking, such as leaving the office early, which is stealing because you accept payment for hours you did not work, playing computer games or online shopping while on company time, which is again stealing, and finally, taking money from the petty cash drawer because no one keeps very good records, and the company is rich and can afford it. Isn't it interesting how we justify our bad behavior? If you find yourself in any of these situations, remember that your actions affect not only yourself, but other stakeholders who may be negatively impacted by your behavior. Remember also that the consequences of your actions may not just be a reprimand, but the loss of your job and worse yet, your reputation. That's it for the Solve It questions. Thanks so much for watching this video on ethical behavior, something I consider to be the most important lesson of all.